Welcome, Dan Runner. The glory days of the video game arcade might be a long way behind us sadly, but they certainly haven't been forgotten, and in this video I'm going to take you back over 25 years to those heady days that played such an important part in our youth. The year is 1994, and we're all present at one of the greatest times in coin-op video game history. You won't find any fruit machines, penny pushers or fixed prize machines here. These are the true arcade classics that lit up dingy smoked filled rooms, sat on stained carpets, and delighted audiences whilst they drained our pockets of all our spare change. Names like Sega, Atari, Namco, Midway and Taito have become synonymous with gaming and so it will be no surprise to see them feature heavily in this video. This is where many of today's popular franchises started, multiple innovations took place and the genres that we know and love today were formed. All of these titles play every bit as well today as they did back then and deserve to be remembered as true classics in the annals of video game history. The first thing I really noticed when I started looking at all the arcade games released in 1994 was the similarity in genres to what we see in today's arcades. Light gun shooters dominated, much as they do in the present day, and as well as the many that made this list, there were loads that didn't, like American Laser Games, The Last Bounty Hunter, and both Under Fire and Operation Wolf 3 from Taito. Another thing I noticed was the start of arcade updates. New versions of existing games promoted as sequels, something else we see a lot of in the modern day. That's not to say that there weren't still a few genuinely original gems released in 1994 though, as you'll find out very shortly when we begin the countdown. Co-created by Rare and Midway to help push the then upcoming Ultra 64 console with its much vaunted silicon graphics based technology, Killer Instinct is a one on one fighting game that relies on two pretty impressive gimmicks. The first of these is the absolutely stunning pre-rendered visuals that were an advancement of the techniques first seen in Donkey Kong Country. The second gimmick comes in the form of the reaction based gameplay mechanic that allows you to perform seemingly impossible combos. Killer Instinct still looks pretty amazing now, even if it doesn't play quite so great. To celebrate the 15th anniversary of their most famous game, Taito decided to bring Space Invaders back to the arcades with this DX edition. This coin-op lets you slip between three different versions of the game, the original 1978 iteration, a new versus mode and a hilarious parody variation. It also lets you choose different screen modes including the black and white original and imitations of the plastic screen overlays. Ok, so there is nothing particularly new or exciting here, like the previous game Super Space Invaders, but it's still a classic game and tremendous fun against a second player. After the huge success of the first Lethal Enforcers game in the arcades and on home consoles, it was pretty obvious that a sequel would follow. But rather than taking place after the first game, this sequel takes us right back in the past and the good old days of the Wild West. Apart from the change in the setting, the actual gameplay is exactly the same. There are main levels that consist of still screens where enemies appear and you have to shoot them before they shoot you, and then there are some scrolling stages such as the one where you are following a stagecoach that criminals are trying to hijack. It's safe to say that the original Ridge Racer was a pretty successful game for Namco. So this sequel was inevitable. That said, many would argue that this isn't actually a sequel at all, and is nothing more than an updated version of the original. You can only assume that Namco was so desperate to get a follow up out there that they took the easy route. The biggest difference in Ridge Racer 2 is that up to 8 people can play simultaneously when 4 twin cabinets are linked together. There are also some new music tracks and a few graphical enhancements, including the change from day to night. One of the few games released as part of EA's short-lived venture into the arcades, Battletoads was actually the very first game developed by Rare to use the 3D graphics technology that was later implemented in both Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct. 
Battletoads was always seen as a rip-off of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's clear that this arcade iteration borrows pretty heavily from the blueprint of Konami's coin-up classic, being more of the traditional scrolling beat-em-up. It's not just the gameplay that changes from the console titles either, as the violence levels have increased dramatically. Like Namco with Ridge Racer, Saibu Kaihatsu were also keen to keep the coins coming in with their biggest hit, so a year later they came back with an updated version of Raiden 2 with a new DX suffix. The adapted name wasn't the only new thing though, as it also had three different game modes, a 15 minute long unbroken stage that doesn't allow players to continue, the first five stages of Raiden 2 and the new 8 stage game plus one bonus with new layouts. This was more than enough to keep the shoot em up aficionados happy for a while, as the game's sales figures prove. The original German Mac was a pretty big hit for Data East, so it was pretty obvious that a sequel would follow, but instead of producing just one sequel, the historic company came up with two. In the arcades we got this game, German Mac Returns, and on console we got German Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. It's also interesting to note that both games follow different game styles, with the home version very much following on from the first title, and this one taking inspiration from a different Day to Reese game in Tumble Pop as a fun and frantic cartoon styled single screen platformer. Now, light gun shooters certainly weren't new or original at this time, as this list very much shows. What about a gun game featuring one of the world's biggest rock bands? And that's exactly what Midway's Revolution X is, as the main stars of the game are none other than Aerosmith, who also supplied the absolutely awesome soundtrack. The digitised graphics and scaling effects help bring the absolutely crazy plot to life, and you can't help but smile as you play it. Revolution X is far from an original game, but it's certainly a very unique one, thanks to its rather unusual subject matter. Cruising USA was the very first game in the now famous Cruising series, but still going strong to this day with the recently released Cruising Blast. Like Killer Instinct, Midway boasted that this cabinet featured the very same hardware that would be found in the upcoming Ultra 64 console. This was of course a lie, as the cut down Nintendo 64 port shows, but that doesn't detract from what a great arcade racing game this is. As the name suggests, the race starts in San Francisco's iconic Golden Gate Bridge and ends at the equally recognisable White House in the capital Washington DC. People often talk about the huge battle for arcade supremacy between Sega and Namco at this time, which then spilled over into the console war with the Saturn and PlayStation. Every time Sega came up with a new game, Namco tried to go one better, and Tekken was, of course, their answer to the groundbreaking Virtua Fighter. It added things such as texture mapping to make the fighting look much prettier, and also featured a much larger lineup of more varied characters. Sega soon fought back with Virtua Fighter 2, which I believe is the much better game, but there's no doubting Tekken's legacy. The original NBA Jam was a massive smash hit in the arcades the year before. It took the ever popular sport of basketball and turned it into an outlandish multiplayer experience that everyone could enjoy. So it was only natural that Midway would follow it up with a sequel, and this tournament edition expands the original game even further by adding a, you guessed it, tournament mode, an even bigger roster to choose from too. You still have all the crazy power-ups, intuitive controls, multiplayer modes, outlandish commentary and a host of great secrets to discover too. One new genre that arrived on the scene around this time was the mech game, with titles like Iron Soldier, Crazy Ivan and Gun Griffin lighting up console screens. But such offerings in the arcades were few and far between, so Atari's T-Mech really stands out. Rather than just being about all-out destruction, T-Mech is focused on a battle against other mechs for up to six war machines, which can include two human players, compete for the spoils. One of the most impressive features of T-Mech was the surround sound that really immersed you in the action along with the impressive 3D visuals.
Of all the coin ops that Namco released at this time, Point Blank is by far the most quirky and original. Rather unusually for a game of this type, all the action is non-violent. Players competing in a series of shooting contests and challenges such as shooting bullseyes, cardboard cutouts, flying objects and cartoon-like enemies, as well as protecting the protagonists, Dr. Don and Dr. Dan. Levels are split into six different categories, accuracy, intelligence, memory, simulation, visual and speed, that all require different skills. Point Blank is still every bit as fun today as it was back then. The recent Jurassic Park arcade game from Raw Thrills can be found in almost every modern arcade, so it's perhaps quite easy to forget that Sega did it first, way back in 1994 no less, and it's clear that Yuji and Jarvis and his new company took inspiration from the original, as the gameplay is almost identical. One or two players simply make their way through all the famous locations seen in the film, shooting the different dinosaurs, grabbing the power-ups and defeating the huge bosses. It's certainly nothing original, but the super scale of visuals and iconic scenery really helped raise the game up a notch. On every one of these arcade lists, I like to include at least one hidden gem, and the Great 1000 Miles Rally is definitely the best candidate for 1994. This fantastic racing game uses a really unique tilted overhead perspective. With rendered cars, realistic handling and stunning scenery, it is based on real locations across Italy. Once the starting flag goes down, you have just 60 seconds to get to the finish line. If you make it within this tight time limit, you move on to the next race. There's a host of historic and iconic cars to choose from, including the Ferrari 250, Porsche 550 and Jaguar D-Type. Sega's Virtua Cop basically takes the classic light gun shooters like Operation Wolf and Terminator 2 and puts them into three dimensions. You and another player take on the role of two cops trying to clean up the city. The camera moves along by itself and all you have to do is shoot the bad guys whilst trying not to kill the good guys. One of the most important features of Virtua Cop is that you have to reload your gun by shooting away from the screen. One of my favourite features of this game is the way you can shoot parts of the scenery like blasting out car windows, putting lights out, and smashing various objects. Primal Rage was absolutely revolutionary for its time, as it used digitised models and stop motion animation to create the visuals, much like an early monster movie. It's a fighting game very much in the Mortal Kombat mould, but with a prehistoric theme instead. You get to choose between a selection of dinosaurs and giant woolly apes, before you do battle in front of a crowd of tiny baying cavemen. If you are clever you can also find some very cunning ways to interact with these Neanderthals too. As well as your standard specials, you also have the now obligatory finishers that include some great comedic touches. The Buster Move series, or Puzzle Bobble, as it was originally known here in the arcade, has to be one of the greatest puzzle game franchises ever. As well as spawning numerous sequels that are still being released to this day, the game has also been cloned to death, especially by mobile developers. In this one or two player game, you play as either Bub or Bob of Bubble Bobble fame as they try to clear all the bubbles from the screen. Using your bubble gun, you must shoot these globes into others of the same colour in order to remove them which is a lot more fiendish than it sounds. Apart from being a Marvel game, X-Men Children of the Atom is especially interesting in that it was the first time that Capcom would use a licensed property to create a new fighting game based on the Street Fighter franchise. In fact, the game would prove to be so popular that they later produced a crossover between the two franchises in the excellent Marvel vs Capcom series. This game features 6 of the good guys and 6 of the villains to make a total of 12 characters. In single player mode you can only play as the good X-Men, but in versus mode however you can play as anybody you like. The first Virtua Fighter game introduced the world of fighting games to polygons and established a whole new genre with it. Sega were quick to follow up on the success of the first game and soon introduced Virtua Fighter 2 into arcades. Gone were the slightly ugly flat shaded polygons 
and in their place were smooth texture matte versions. Sega also improved the backgrounds and added two new characters into the mix too, with over 2,000 moves now at your disposal. The first game was certainly groundbreaking, but it did feel a little clunky. This sequel irons out all those issues and more to create a stunning fighter. And that rounds up my look at the greatest arcade games of 1994. Are there any others you can think of that should have made the list? Or do you disagree with any of the entries that I did include? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. D Vaughan, Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Ozzy B, Dos Gaming Man, Grady Haynes, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access for host for extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the lad, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.